Hello and welcome to Catholic Kickstarter. My name is Stephen Fleming and you're very welcome to today's show. On today's show we have a really special guest and that is Father Sean Goff and he is here to answer the question, is God's love compatible with hell or is hell compatible with God's love? If you would like to see more content about the Catholic faith, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. That way you will be notified when new videos drop. But without further ado, let's hand it over to Father Sean. Well, I think it's interesting that you've mentioned love there because I'm sure there's a lot of people at home and I know I'm from my own self, looking back, I'm, I would, would have been saying, well, how is hell compatible with God's love? You know, if he really loves us, how is that compatible? So we have to um, really just ask the question then, what does it really mean to love? You know, in order to love, we need to be free. God could have created us to, uh, well, in fact, I was going to say God could have created us in a way that he forced us to love him. But actually, I'll take that back. God couldn't have created us in a way that we were forced to love him, in that we must love him. That's true both of the angels and of us as hum human beings, because part of the very definition of love, part of what love is, is that it's something which is freely given. It's freely given, uh, willing of the good of the other, the one that you're loving. And it's got to be free. And so, Hell fits into that context. It's that God does ne never wants to destroy our freedom to love. He's never going to force us to love. And that's why we as human beings or the angels have that possibility always in that freedom of rejecting the love of God and not accepting it. And so, yeah, it's difficult perhaps to see how hell can be compatible with love. And there is still a lot of mystery. I don't want to kind of overly make it too logical as though, oh yeah, everything's really nice and tidy and makes complete sense. Look, everything to do with um, life after death is shrouded in mystery for us as Christians. It's something that we don't know an awful lot about. Yeah, we know the broad brushstrokes, but we don't know the fine details. And we do know though that it's precisely because God loves us, that he wants to preserve our freedom. I was just thinking, you know, this Sunday, <clears throat> we've got um, a gospel coming up whereby the demon, uh, Jesus casts out a demon. And just before the demon asks Jesus a question, he says to Jesus, um, have you come here to destroy us? And Jesus doesn't answer that question, but he doesn't destroy the demon. No, he does send the demon out of the man who he was possessing, but he doesn't destroy him. He sends him out. He casts him away. He stops him from oppressing that man who he was oppressing, but he doesn't destroy him. And God's created us in love, and he still loves, ultimately, all those who are in hell, just as much as he loves those who are in heaven, just as much as he loves those who are in purgatory. And it's that very love that he has for them which holds them in being, which keeps them all in existence, whether angels or humans. It's the same love. But for those who are in purgatory and hell, it's a different experience, of course, of the love of God than it is for those who are in heaven. For those who are in purgatory, the experience of the love of God there that keeps them in being is one that's purgative, purgatory. It's one that purifies, that cleans, that refines, that prepares for heaven. And the experience of the love of God for those who are in hell is one of torment, not because God's inflicting punishments on people, no, but rather because people have rejected that love. And so the same love becomes a torment precisely because it's something which has been rejected. Um, mm. C.S. Lewis actually uh, notes that uh, so C.S. Lewis being the author, of course, of Chronicles of Narnia, as well as a very famous, he's not, not a Catholic, he was an Anglican, but very famous Christian author. And he makes a, an interesting point. 
But the images for heaven, for hell, and for purgatory are all actually quite similar. They all somehow involve the idea of either light or of fire. But it's really the experience that changes. So this scriptural image is one of light or fire, but it's the experience that changes. And ultimately that leads him to, and this is a very memorable thing, a very wise thing, I think, to say that hell ultimately becomes something that's inflicted upon oneself because, because we've rejected in our freedom the love of God. Hell is something that we inflict upon ourselves, and ultimately the door to hell is locked, not by God from the outside, but by us from the inside. God loves us and he'd never want us to be damned. God wills that all people will be saved. And he sent his son, his only son, into the world to show us how to be saved, to die for us on the cross, to rise again for us, and to offer us the possibility of salvation. It's his will that all people are saved and that none will be damned, but we do ultimately have that choice.